Kristen Orkiza is here with us. Her father, Mark Anthony Orkiza, who voted for President Trump in a story she told on live television tonight, died in June after contracting COVID-19. And in a blistering obituary after his death, she blamed the death on, quote, the carelessness of the politicians who continue to jeopardize the health of brown bodies through a clear lack of leadership. Uh, knowing I was going to talk to you tonight, Kristen, in addition to saying I'm sorry for your loss, had your loss been as part of a military family, you would have what we like to call a gold star family in this country. It is so, so very different. And you weren't looking to be an activist, of course. Your father's death forced you to act. What have you learned since you stepped into the public eye, since you told us all your dad's story. There are people walking around this country who know your dad's story, and that is thanks to you and you alone. The thing that I've seen over the course of the last month is that while people may know my dad's story now because of me speaking up, I have heard literally the story of thousands of people who have a story similar to mine, that a loved one was lost too early and that they're angry and upset and that they know that these deaths were preventable. Um, that breaks my heart, but it also keeps motivating me to continue to raise my voice to advocate for those who, who can't otherwise. The saddest part, of course, is that there are people watching you tonight who are living this. They may be the loved ones of a late stage patient who feel like they've seen this same car accident that you witnessed conditions no better than what you witnessed living in a country where we've done scarcely little to improve. You're absolutely right. And it's been, you know, a little over a month since my father passed. And the thing that that breaks my heart even further is that I've seen no action from the federal government to take this pandemic seriously. And the cost of that is, as you're saying, real human lives. My dad was a wonderful person who did not deserve to die alone in a hospital with just a nurse holding his hand. But that story is happening all across the United States and will continue to happen um, if the federal government and the Trump administration continues to downplay the virus. And instead of tackling the virus is trying to do things like uh, thwart the Postal Service for enabling us to vote safely. Um, so I'm enraged. We are in a moment, in a crisis, and our government is not acting like it. As a son and as a dad myself, the part of hearing your testimonial that hit me the hardest was that with this disease especially, at every stage, it's almost designed to take away the patient's dignity. It's almost designed to prevent contact with everyone in your life that you love. That's exactly right. My dad went into the hospital and I didn't get to see him at all. Um, I couldn't even talk to him on the phone because even before he went on a ventilator, the machinery that was keeping him alive was so loud, um, which we're seeing a picture of right now, that I could barely hear his voice and he was struggling to breathe. So we had to send text messages to one another um, over the course of his last couple of weeks of life. Um, I had to say goodbye to my dad over a FaceTime message. Um, it was akin to a living nightmare. It's something I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. How did this change the way perhaps you see doctors and nurses? thought that doctors and nurses were incredibly important people. I actually thought I was going to be a doctor at first and when I went away to college, but I have seen doctors and nurses being put in an impossible position that they shouldn't be put in. And I part of why I speak out is because we should be fighting for them as well. I worry about the long-term health impacts that this um, pandemic and our response is going to have on them. They're working around the clock and making impossible decisions. Um, that is part of this pandemic. It's another layer of this pandemic that we are not coming to terms with. 
Kristen, by talking to you, we try to honor your father's life and legacy, and it is an absolute honor to be able to talk to you, having heard you uh, tell your story and your dad's story. Uh, Kristen Urquiza, thank you very much for staying up with us and for having us in. We greatly appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.